Yeah, done. Done. Oh. The algorithm of information and the origins of particles. The aim is to establish a theory about the origins of basic particles, an idea of experimental proof from some aspects. I, I rely more on experiments to prove my stuff. First, before we go on there, we must understand what relationships are. Everything is in a relationship. You can only understand this when you include that everything, everything includes life. You could not get here that everything is in a relationship because of attempts to take life out of the equations by likes of Einstein. Thus, in reality, this is an old theory and should have been known in the 1950s and 60s that everything is in a relationship. It should not, it's not a 21st century thing, but they took out life long ago so we couldn't get to everything is in a relationship. All relationships take energy to maintain, leading to the first law of everything. Every relationship leads to a loss of freedom. This loss of freedom is due to energy needed to maintain a relationship. The amount of energy <coughs> needed to maintain a relationship is the same amount of energy needed to break up a relationship. The more complex things are, the less energy is needed. An atom versus a human. All relationships, I believe, are random and thus determined and limited by a probability function. The laws of everything, so far, every relationship leads to a loss of freedom due to energy needed to maintain a, a relationship. An information package will remain in its present state unless a relationship is established. The second law of everything is inspired by Newton. All disciplines study relationships, be it physics, geography, history, psychology, boxing, mechanics, a chef, all disciplines. The energy relationships. The first law of information is that probability function deals with chances of a relationship and how much energy is required for that relationship. The second law, probability of a relationship ending. Everything is information. Everything is made up of the same stuff. Everything will inform you what it is through the five senses. Instruments aid our five senses. The basic characteristics of everything. It is discrete. It is independent. It can be isolated. It can be used to compute. It is consistent. That's why logic is important. It is random and everything is in a relationship. Randomness. When talking of randomness, it means every event in this universe is determined and limited by a probability function. The simple reality of everything is in a relationship. Those relationships have a cost because they need energy to maintain. Is this important, what I've just said? I'm just going to read something to you. Some people apparently do think it's important. So I was listening to quarks and quirks in Canada and I heard a renowned physicist, Lee Smolin, talking about the future being around everything being about relationships. My thoughts word for word. I immediately contacted the CBC and said, hey, this Lee Smolin chap is stealing my work and is taking work for work. And I sent evidence to the CBC, no reply. I posted the evidence on their website, it was deleted. Good Lord, and this is a liberal democracy. That means involved in taking the mind of a black. They can't allow what they must, if they claim to be believers in order to allow the idea of everything in a relationship comes from a kumalum. For indeed, they must teach their children this simple fact that all disciplines study the same thing before they leave high school. It is a big deal. Please don't be naive and believe otherwise. Public broadcasters are the state. We are talking about governments. And Trudeau mocks black people with his blackface, and so he can't have this stuff coming out. And then the liberals will say Trump is more racist than them. 
I would ask you what way forward if you refuse that everything is in a relationship and those relationships cost energy to maintain. Where is knowledge going to go if you refuse this reality? It is a big deal. You think Western society really wants to say that this is from a Kumala and that the Kumala is not even an Oxford or Yale black. Let's see what this simplicity leads to. Roots of the algorithm of information. There is a probability, seeing as everything is in a relationship, there is a probability of XI getting into a relationship. And this, it doesn't come out, but this should be PI, P2, P3, P4, PI. So there's a probability X of P3 of XI getting into a relationship with X3, and we get X3, 1. There is a probability PI of XI getting into a relationship, and we get XI, 1. Probabilities are assigned. I, I don't know what's happening here. But this should be summation of PI equals 1. That is obvious. PI varies determined by TI. She is, it's not always constant. Uh, a probability. Ti varies for more specific probabilities. Like in a war, there's, prob there's a greater probability of, pe of dying than in peace. So Ti affects the probability. The origins of X, but even, even though everything is in a relationship, it comes from a relationship. I come from a relationship. This comes from a relationship. And the Probability of XI is that it comes from a, an, 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 a preceding event, and we call this event XK. So there's a probability PI that XK will become XI. Information package XI comes from information package XK. It is important to illustrate that all information packages are the result of an event in the past that created that relationship. That is that information packet. A 13-year-old should understand this for the sake of keeping it real. Whatever discipline will just be about information. Now where does particle K come from? Be it a glue one, a quack. So the probability of a relationship of K, uh, of, of, before we get into where the particle comes from, we have a particle Ki and it can react it has a probability P1 of reacting with K1, and we get this. It has a probability P2 of reacting with K2, another part of K2, and it has a probability PI of reacting with KI, and we get KRI. So a particle itself, the electron in me and the protons in me are here by chance. They could be on Jupiter or on Andromeda, and I could have a different set of electrons and protons in me. Characteristics of something come with an event associated with PI. Everything is made up of the same stuff and everything is in a relationship. Where does this particle KI come from? What relationships led to the basic particles? Before we do that, let's talk about neutrinos. Where do they come from? A neutrino can come from other particles. It's a result of relationships. It can be a result of a relationship between protons can lead to creation of a neutrino. Relationships between protons and electrons can in certain circumstances produce neutrinos. Neutrinos, protons, and electrons are therefore made up of all the same stuff. If protons can smash together, and protons and electrons can smash together, and we get electrons, and we get neutrinos, that means neutrinos are made up of exactly the same stuff as electrons and as Protons. And when you say protons, that means quacks. To before the beginning. Particles are made up of the same stuff. If electrons and protons and quacks are made up of the same stuff, just, it's okay. So are neutrons, neutrinos, all the other particles are made up of the same stuff, everything. The mass is assigned by the algorithm of information. 
from what we know about information, 100% we know there is a smallest and a biggest particle. And we get to the next illustration. So we have a simple reason. We have a particle and it has a mass. The largest particle we know will have a mass of O, and the smallest particles we know will have a mass of N. And the smallest particles we know are photons. They have no mass, but they do have a rest mass. Now, in between N and O, N and O, not everything becomes a particle. Only certain masses can become particles. And I will prove it to you through experiments that have been done. Only, so not everything, not, not everything in between N and O becomes a particle. Only certain masses will become particles worthy of note. The beginnings of the algorithm of information will have a character Xi. We'll just call it, a, and probability Pi, P2, P3, P4, Pi. Probability Si becomes particle K, it becomes P2, it becomes particle K2. Pi, it becomes particle Ki. The original action of the algorithm of information is that the summation of particles, the number of particles Ki times the mass of particles Ki over the mass of the universe equals 1. We know the results of the first event because we believe those using their knowledge estimate the numbers because we all share knowledge particles at the beginning so we know 0 0.1 seconds after the big bang how many neutrinos there were how many quarks there were how many bosons there were so we know the very first action <coughs> of the algorithm of <coughs> information directly because we know how many particles were immediately after the big bang that is the algorithm of information. It determines the mass of particles, and the mass of a particle is what gives it its characteristics. It determines how many particles and types of particles, and thus determines conditions of the right amount of mass here. And of trillions, not even one loose end, out of trillions upon, and because they're not of, of loose end, we don't see gluons flying around, we see photons flying around. So everything was given its characteristics right at the beginning. Big Bang is when mass is introduced. We can see in a collider the destruction of mass. That is the opposite of a Big Bang. Thus, there never was infinite mass at the beginning. We see the stuff in a collider returning to what it was. That is experimental proof that when neutrinos smash each other, we get exotic particles, that thing returns to what it was before. You can't get more experimental proof than a collider. SI was introduced above. What is this SI? It is a property within the same stuff that makes up everything. It is what becomes the particle given the right conditions when it acquires mass. Particles follow a probability function. Not everything becomes a particle. We can see in a colliders exotic particles of all sizes being unstable and thus lose their mass. Because they fall out, out of that range, they lose their mass. But they have more mass than a photon, but they're unstable so they can't stick around. They have to go. So I said, I say SI can only be a string because I'm trying to be conservative here. I'm trying to follow others that came before me. What's the point of inventing a name when something's already there? To a sta stable mass, the string must be a certain mass that gives it its characteristics. Above, we talked about it be between N and zero. SI represents the limits of quantum mechanics. It's just something else before this point. Before the Big Bang, there is no quantum mechanics because there is no mass. Wait, I will prove it to you. The string is involved in a relationship to get mass. A particle, its, re its origins pre-Big Bang, the particle post-Big Bang. So the string is pre-Big Bang and the particle is post-Big Bang. In a collider, mass is being destroyed. Each time a particle is destroyed, there is less mass in the universe. So every time neutrons smash each other in a collider, there is less mass in the universe. 
because we have destroyed mass and you are seeing it with your two eyes. You are seeing mass being destroyed. The Big Bang is a random function. We know when it occurred. Why didn't it occur yesterday? If it's predetermined, why did it occur at the time it occurred? It left, now they say 11 billion years ago. Last week it was 14 billion years ago. So if it only occurred 11 billion years ago, we know the time it took place, so it is a random event, the Big Bang. The stuff that made the particles is still out there. This, so, because when we smash particles in a collider, they return to what they were. So this stuff that made particles is still out there, and it has no mass. Theoretically, understanding the relation, so that, so that's if we add to, to we, and we add to this stuff whenever we smash neutrons, neutrons in a collider, the stuff that makes back the color. So that's theoretically understanding the relationships. We, if we understood the reverse of smashing a neutrino, we can actually add mass to the universe. Stuff, we can add ma we can create an electron by understanding this stuff. We can pack the right mass. This is philosophically in line with the photonic cycle and the importance of life in the universe. Further questions are asked here if everything <coughs> is made up of the same stuff. <coughs> Smashing neutrons together, we get unstable, then this everything is made up of. With antiparticles meeting particles, we get the same thing in steps. So the neutron, we get unstable particles, we get massless matter. You see this in a collider. A, we only talk about experiments. Understanding the differences by speculation with a bit of, we can now just destroy mass, but we can add mass. This enormous energy used to destroy mass, is understand, could surely be used to create mass. A particle from nothing. A big bang type, but it's not from nothing because we know you cannot destroy a neutrino and it becomes nothing. It is something, but it has no mass and it becomes unstable. A, a neutron, I mean, it, it's unstable because it doesn't have the right mass to be stable. This enormous energy, E equals mc squared, becomes redundant before the big bang. There is no mass. That is enough to make you done it. It doesn't matter who you are or who your best friend is. E is equal to mc squared is irrelevant before the Big Bang because there was no mass. Now, we define energy in terms of S. So now E is equal to a function of SK and thus mc squared would become a function of SK but mc squared, there's no mass there. So you can't, and in a massless world, you can't gain infinite mass where there is no mass. You can't gain infinite mass. So many possibilities are now possible. Gravity is associated with mass. It is not relevant in a massless existence. What? And you, you see that in a... You can't... Gravity is associated... Take out... Now, this is very important for modern physics. Take out the principles behind M is equal to C squared when dealing with the origins of particles and the origins of the universe. This will make models less complex. In the old days, people loved math so much they defended that the idea that the Earth is the center of the universe using math, even though the Earth wasn't the center of the universe. So now we've got all these string theory models and they're full of so many dimensions because they're trying to get rid 